Biden on him, which is a little strange. I challenge Joe and every Democrat to clarify that they only want legal votes because they talk about votes, and I think they should use the word legal, legal votes. We want every legal vote counted, and I want every legal vote counted. We want openness and transparency, no secret count rooms, no mystery ballots, no illegal votes being cast after Election Day. You have Election Day, and the laws are very strong on that. You have an Election Day, and they don't want votes cast after Election Day, and they want the process to be an honest one. It's so important. We want an honest election, and we want an honest count, and we want honest people working back there, because it's a very important job. So that's the way this country is going to win. That's the way the United States will win. And we think we will win the election very easily. We think there's going to be a lot of litigation, because we have so much evidence, so much proof, and it's going to end up perhaps at the highest court in the land. We'll see. But we think there'll be a lot of litigation because we can't have an election stolen like, like, like this. And I, I tell you, I, would, I have been talking about this for many months with all of you. And I've said very strongly that mail-in ballots are going to end up being a disaster. Small elections were a disaster. Small, very easy-to-handle elections were disastrous. Uh, this is a large-scale version, and it's getting worse and worse every day. We're hearing stories that are horror stories, absolute horror stories. And we can't let that happen to the United States of America. It's not a question of who wins, Republican, Democrat, Joe, myself. We can't let that happen to our country. We can't be disgraced by having something like this happen. So it will be hopefully cleared up, maybe soon, I hope soon. But it'll probably go through a process, a legal process. And uh, as you know, I've claimed certain states, and uh, he's claiming states, and we can both claim the states. But ultimately, I have a feeling judges are going to have to rule. But there's been a lot of shenanigans, and we can't uh, stand for that in our country. Thank you very much. Wait a minute, let me go here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. You are at the Exceptional Conservative Show live for the nation's capital. Sorry about that, Miss. Don't 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 find me, Mary Brockman. Don't find me, Bonnie Williams. Uh, that was just a small task snap you. Uh, <laughs> I have with me one of America's great conservative commentators, uh, none other than Dave Milner, uh, the unpleasant blind guy. You can find him at UBG contact, UBG contact on Twitter. Uh, you can listen to him as you did this afternoon at 3.30 p.m. Uh, on Blog Talk Radio on English Defense League with Jeff Mitchell. Uh, they will be back on Sunday at 3.30 p.m. as well. Dave, uh, please explain to me uh, why we should not consider the United States of America a shithole country as a result of the efforts of the Democrat Marxists uh, to fraudulently take a presidential take a presidential election. Uh, well, thank you for having me on, Ken. And I've got my camera on. Oh, um, you look you know, good, man. <laughs> and, and the people can't see me, though. That's, that's too bad. I, I know Mary is just totally wanting to see my beard. <laughs> she's, she's into but that thing <laughs> I should have known Ken that something was was in the air of course we knew there'd be cheating I should have known that something was in the air when I had my voting experience and uh, I went to my usual polling place and I got there right at the time I wanted uh, which was squeezed between the morning rush and the lunch rush, okay, mm -hmm. just to avoid the crowds and whatnot. Uh, and that also is good for the poll workers because just in case I need help, and there are more people that can do that, all right? Yeah. So I, I got to that area, and, of course, there was a big uh, tent thing that had to go through and get a mask and all of that. And, yes, I took a free mask and threw away the one that I've been using since March. <laughs> as... as as I said on another show, I did not want the mass debate to be the hill that my boat died on. And, mm. But before I got there, some uh, some dude walks up to me just as I'm going in the tent. And he had on a badge, and it looked as if he was one of the poll workers. I don't know, it 
was this uh, squarish white badge, and obviously I couldn't see what it was. But he rolls up on me, and he asks me if I have a dollar. Now, mm -hmm. Ken, I've been voting <laughs> since 1978, man. I have never <laughs> oh my been God. handled at a voting, at, at, at a polling station before uh, I was on the third here in Burlington, Vermont. So that was a first. I should have known something was in the air. Wow. So we got we got individuals who are from the homeless shelter, <laughs> poll workers, and I bet you they were certified poll workers too, right, Dave? <laughs> Oh, yeah, certified, yeah, and, and now up here, I don't know how it was with your personal voting experience, Ken, but up here as well, there were about, I'd say about one-fifth of the little voting areas in uh, in my location as it normally is because of the Wuhan. They had everybody standing well apart from each other and all this other mess, but another interesting thing that happened while I was in the tent before I went into this school where the polling place is mm -hmm. um guy asked me if i had my my mail-in ballot and i said yes i did uh, and he asked if i wanted to vote that way <laughs> mm -hmm. which i'm at the polling place why not just so why not just <coughs> let me fill out a paper ballot and be done but no, would you like to vote that way uh, no 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 thank you i'll i'll go inside and, and do a paper ballot and show it in the machine as usual uh, which I did, okay, uh, but I just found it fascinating that even even though I at the polling place and could walk right in there and do the business, okay, that they were still wanting me to use a vote-by-mail ballot. I thought that was fascinating and slightly sketchy. Mm -hmm. and, and I looked at the numbers, and while the, uh, while the votes for Trump were about, uh, were down slightly, from uh, 2016 in Vermont, uh, President Trump still got about half of the of the presidential votes in Bernie Sanders' home state. I mean, that right there mm. should should be an indicator to you and to the rest of your viewers of of just how much the mood has switched in this country, and and you combine that with all of the polling that came from the Trafalgar group, the only pollsters, by the way, that got it right. Mm -hmm. And we, I believe, you and I and, and many others, were quite justified on election night in saying we thought that President Trump was going to win, barring cheating from Democrats. <laughs> yeah. I love that term, barring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, Jeff Mitchell... Um, my boss on English Fence League Radio uh, made a great observation, which I didn't notice, okay? But once I thought about it, I was like, yeah, that did happen. What he said was, that as he was observing from the UK, the moment that Florida got called for President Trump, all of the other vote counting in states, again, like Georgia, um, uh, North Carolina, all right, um, Michigan, Pennsylvania began to slow way down, and you noticed that, Ken. By the yep. time, by the time we went off air at about uh, two a.m. Eastern, all right, um, I had been scanning all of these states, just going flipping from one to the other, and seeing what well, they still got eighty-five percent of their precincts reporting in. What the heck is that? That they had that an hour ago. All right, so. All of that sketchiness was going on. Um, yeah, because we noticed, we had noticed the throttling of the results. Uh, the, the, there were some states like Wisconsin uh, and Michigan where we did see the numbers go backwards. And, you know, maybe they were just playing some video games or something and, like, they lost uh, power or something or bandwidth. But the bottom line was... We were feeling the sketchiness right around seven o'clock. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, that, that was about that about the time. And I have to commend Bonnie Williams because she was, you know, she her instincts came out, and she was saying that 
it looked a little strange to her, and it certainly looked strange to me. I mean, I was watching, I was watching Fox News coverage, and I have to say that um, for people who, um, for people who in the future are going to be looking at election coverage, you guys really need to be tuning into places like TEC and TV and, and um, uh, other other places other than Fox, because one of the first things I noticed was Fox uh, had Donna Brazil on on their on their. Uh, election night panel and I was thinking okay yeah this tells me everything I need to know about how they're going to cover this and then they just immediately call Virginia exactly I mean, the, the, the polls in Virginia had been closed for like an atto second I think that's about a millionth of a second and they call them Virginia um, it, it their coverage was just diabolical Exactly, um, and and let me just interrupt very quickly. Ahead, uh, Bonnie Williams, who is the vice president of TECN TV, uh, I don't like to give her public kudos because that makes my job harder. <laughs> uh, she's going to require me to pay her. Uh, but I, I tell you, Bonnie was right on target with us at when she came on board that she thought it fascinating that the networks were calling Virginia for Donald Trump even though the polls had just closed five minutes earlier. They don't know how you do that. Um, and we were watching those curiosities throughout the night, and we had made jokes about the fact that they must have been printing up some ballots, which is why they delayed the count. And gosh darn it, Michigan, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, I will tell you that I was so hyped up that once... Your coverage stopped. I, you know, popped in to see if SHR Media had any coverage going, and and they had they had closed up shop. So I flipped over to Stephen Crowder, and he uh, his crew stayed up uh, and a little bit past when President Trump came out and made his statement, and they were every bit as bewildered, honestly, as as we were, uh, and asking the question. Okay, it's question night. <coughs> Why do you stop counting votes on election night and then go home and go night night? You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As, and, and that's another thing, Ken. I want to talk about stress here uh, when it comes to election night coverage and, and coverage of, of all sorts. Okay, uh, louder with Crowder is you know uh, is part of the blaze. It's you know he's got he's got uh, you know producers and all, and all kinds of sidekicks and whatnots and everything on all of his shows and everything very well funded and everything and I gotta say I looked at their coverage and then I compared it to your coverage and I gotta say man um, <laughs> you know TEC and TV did every bit as fine a job with every bit as, as fine a crew or better than, uh, than what Steven Crowder has and, and, and I consider him to be to be respectable yeah but um, yeah you you stop counting uh, you stop counting ballots um, and, and go home and the statement that President Trump made um, informing us that Pennsylvania is uh, is appealing a, a decision to allow uh, observers in, why would you do that? Why would you appeal something like that unless you were up to something sketchy? Can it, this is what concerns me the most here mm -hmm. is not the is not the 2020 election and it's not President Trump. Uh, I've I've heard people talking now about 2022 and 2024, and I'll say this. None of that is going to happen and have a good outcome if we don't have an election system that's that's honest. Yes. Right? If we don't have an election system that's honest, then it's goodbye to the American Republic. I think that is uh, really the big takeaway that we have to um, that we have to see right now. I I, I got to ask you first. I want to announce to people because I made a statement earlier uh, tonight about the fact that. Uh, the Twitterverse, uh, Facebook, uh, and YouTube will all work in simultaneously against the President of the United States and attempting to block first the Hunter Biden story, but also block out the fact that there's fraud going on in voting across America. Uh, I don't know how you can be a, a counter in the Democrat counting area and wear the Joe Biden, Kamala Harris uh, face mask 
and people not think that you're slightly biased. Uh, but Facebook has just uh, dinged me. They stated that there's false information found in your posts. Uh, independent fact checkers who are funded by George Soros uh, and other radical left groups uh, say that this story is wrong, that there are no states that have more votes than registered voters. And I like oh, to know... Wrong. I like to know how do they know that? <laughs> well, Ken, okay, that's been my big problem with Facebook all along as far as these fact-checking things that they're doing and all of that. Facebook is not a, um, is not a journalistic organization. It never has been. It's supposed to be a social media platform. So it is not their job to be a fact-checking platform. It's their job to provide a social media platform for people to post what they can post. But they've taken it upon themselves to become some kind of truth watchdog, which they were never supposed to be. It's such a shame that the only time these uh, truth watchdogs are actually appear to be awake is when they're monitoring conservatives. They don't seem to have a problem at all allowing leftists and Islamo-fascists to say whatever they want. All right, uh, they they have been been part of the problem, and they are continuing to be part of the problem. And at at this point, I'm you know it's very tempting to back uh, to back them either being fined ruinously or broken up or being subjected to Section 230, uh, because I've never seen this this sort of blatant election theft in the entirety of the amount of times that I've uh, voted in American elections. Exactly. And I just want everyone to know that the Annenberg Foundation, which is a leftist-leaning group, uh, along with George Soros, funds fact checkers uh, so I, I you are bound to get a politically balanced opinion uh, forgive me biased opinion from any of the fact checking sites it's what they do their job is to tell you that you're a liar and that you are to believe that you are a liar uh, unfortunately there are too many conservatives that have been taken uh, by that method methodology uh, and really believe that what Facebook says is true, what Twitter says is true, what Google says is true, because I don't want to be wrong. I, I just want to give people the right information. Dave, can you speak to that for just a moment, the acceptance of bias, uh, lunacy by the, by the right? Yeah, I, I mean, this is, okay, there, there are two things involved in this, and one of them is... Just a um, just a desire to get along, and that's very nice. Except you wind up not telling some truths that need to be told. And the other, uh, let's be honest, is money. <laughs> okay, there, there are certain yeah, there are certain things that the big bugs out there don't want to talk about. You're one of the few that will talk about things like Islamofascism and uh, th things like that horrible attack in in Vienna which took place, by the way, on on, uh, on the 3rd, or excuse me, on, on the 2nd, and it drifted into the 3rd. Um, you know, it, it, is, it is about, uh, can I get myself on the curvy couch at Fox at some point? Yeah. Um, you know, I've got sponsors here that I have to satisfy. I don't want to be too controversial. All right, so I want to be careful and allow these fact-checkers to help me determine how I'm going to report on things or whether things are true. And this brings up another point. Uh, people tend to get hung up on labels. Yes. All right. Um, Antifa, anti-fascist, hope not hate. All right. Um, and fact checkers. And they just take those labels uh, as read and they don't look behind them. I mean, God help us that are, you know, praise Jesus that there's never an organization that, that is that is popped up called uh, 
fuzzy puppies and cute kittens. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a leftist, a maniacal terrorist organization. You know it is. You know it is. <laughs> exactly. You have to. And this is something else. You have to exercise a little fortitude and look behind the labels. And that's tough for people who don't have a lot of time. Okay, and, and that's fine. People have to go to work and whatnot. Okay, and they want to live their lives. Okay, but for people who are involved in podcasting or for people who are involved in information dissemination, it's their job to look behind these things and to uh, and to determine what kind of organization they are. Black Lives Matter. Mm. Okay, great. Uh, okay. Does anybody on earth, aside from a couple of hood-wearing KKK idiots, uh, not agree with that sentiment? <laughs> of course, everybody agrees with that sentiment. All right. But you had to go to their website to find out that, uh, well, they, they took this bit of it down, that they were against the traditional family and that they were, uh, were for Marxism and that they were for sexual deviance and things of that nature. It, it, it really s speaks to people being gullible and mentally lazy, and it is on us as citizens, and it is especially on people uh, like yourself and myself and other, other people who are disseminating information to look beyond the label, to see what's behind the curtain, see the real truth, and report that out. And sadly, Democrats have tapped into that crowd of people who just, uh, yeah, I'm home from work. I just want to watch the news for half an hour, maybe, and then look at, I don't know, you know, The Voice exactly. or, um, or The Daily Show. And, and they <laughs> consider The Daily Show to be their half hour or, or hour long of news. And then they'll go and watch Bob's Burgers. And so will I. <laughs> exactly. And so will, and so will you. But the difference is, before you and I go and watch Bob's Burgers, we are delving into the backgrounds of these organizations, and we're asking the hard questions. Okay, why is it that in in Philadelphia there is all this sketchiness with these with these ballots? Why why are they appealing an order to allow observers in to watch them count the ballots? Why is that? And, and and so there you go. That's that's all part of saying that, Ken, in the end, uh, for each American citizen, this is on us, and we had better get it together and support the president and support these legal actions, because if we don't, the republic is over. Yeah, I, and there are two things I want to get to real quick with you, because uh, I don't know where you are in your taping, if we're on Thanksgiving Eve or Thanksgiving night. Um and, and uh, the Dallas Cowboys are pretending to play football. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lord, don't go there. <laughs> but uh, I, I want to address two specific things. The media was very quick to come out that 77% of Jews voted for Joe Biden. Uh, and I want to know if that has something to do with the president's peace deal uh, in the Middle East. And here's the, the latter thing that I want you to count on, uh, talk about uh, why the media is squashing the news that 20% of black men voted for Donald Trump. Well, that first figure actually amazes me. 77%, uh, now you say 70%, 77% of Jewish people voted for Biden. Now, uh, I just want to get that. Yeah, that's what they say. That's what okay. they say. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that figure does amaze me. And I think part of it is because the... Trump administration's peace efforts in the Middle East have not been properly covered. You'd never hear about that stuff if, if it wasn't for TEC and TV and SHR Media and, and other outlets, okay? You'd never hear about that. So, so I think that's where part of that comes from. And, yeah, it, it actually shocked me to see, um, I, I sent you the link, uh, yeah. that 20% uh, that of black men actually voted for President Trump. They were even saying it, on election night in, in some places, and, and yesterday they were saying it a bit more, uh, President Trump got more of the black vote in 2020. Uh, he, got, he, got, um, he got more of the black vote uh, than, than any Republican.
Republicans since 1960, which I think is saying rather a lot. But you're not going to hear about that kind of stuff if you listen to the fake stream media. Exactly. Dave Milner, God bless you, sir. Thank you for all that you do uh, for the Considerate Movement well, for English well, Defense you, League. And by the way, this will be on the Unpleasant Blind Guy page at Spreaker.com on the 11th. So it will be on, uh, you know, on Remembrance Day in the UK. And let's not forget that um, Veterans Day is Veterans, coming up too. Veterans, exactly. And, and just want to say to everybody, real quick, since you'll be listening on that particular time period, you would be damned to all eternity. It's not listed in the Bible, so don't, I'm not going there. But you would be damned to all eternity in terms of a scourge on your personal psychological life. If you choose not to honor your World War II great-grandfather or father or Korean War father or Vietnam grandfather or however, if you would not spend time with them because Dr. Fauci says you need a mask, screw Dr. Fauci. You need to be around your parents, your grandparents, your loved ones, at Thanksgiving, at Christmas, at New Year's Eve, at New Year's Day, but also, more importantly, Veterans Day, because they paid the ultimate price in terms of service so that you would dare surrender your First Amendment right to a leftist like Dr. Fauci. That said, that done. Dave Milner, we love you, man. Thank you so much. Love you, brother. God bless you. All right. Uh, listen, ladies and gentlemen, it we are coming to that time of night where I, I have to close out, uh, and uh, I, I I really hate closing out tonight because I really, I got so much stuff to talk about, but I, I just can't thank enough all of the people that came to TECN TV to watch uh, the coverage um, of the election on that night it is on youtube ladies and gentlemen too big to put on bit shoot i wouldn't dare do that but uh the there's the first hour in which uh bonnie williams is present uh in the seven o'clock hour uh is on bit shoot as well youtube and i would encourage you all to go there and watch it um but I, I, I must say this to you without a shadow of a doubt. We are very close to becoming that nation that we didn't want to be. And we're doing it because of fear. I don't know if any of you all believe what the Word of God says, that we all have an appointed time. Some of us just don't believe that we do. But all of us are not going to die from COVID-19. All of us are not going to die from a plague. Nor should we cower in fear as you have governmental leaders that are now planning to make certain that the states are not open for another four years. They do plan on keeping the United States closed for another four years, whether it be schools or the economy. We can't let that happen, ladies and gentlemen. No amount of fear justifies abandoning our faith and abandoning our Constitution. Because I assure you that once a man has his boot on your face, it will be there forever. Just ask George Orwell. Ladies and gentlemen, without a shadow of a doubt, we shared as well to everybody. I want you all to go out and share that beautiful face, Bonnie Williams there and her video for the election coverage. See, Bonnie, I, I shouldn't have to pay a fine tonight because I promoted the fact that you did the video, okay? You did the video. Uh, so please take away that fine. She probably won't. Uh, listen, if you don't remember anything else tonight as I cut the camera too, cannot be fine for saying that. Uh, I want you to remember this flag and remember that it raises the understanding that God blessed America it is now time for America to bless God. Smooches gracias, Mary Brockman. I love you dearly. Thank you so much. Smooches gracias, Mrs. Biggs. Love you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Smooches gracias, Bonnie Williams. Thank you so much. Love you dearly. My boy Dave, what's up?
Thank you so much for being here. Good night to everybody, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back tomorrow night. Uh, and we will probably be talking about uh, the contemptible actions of the of the drag queen community. Yeah, I know some of y'all want me to just talk about politics all night long. No, there's some deeper problems in America. The drag queen community is a representation of just how deviant this nation has become and what it means when you as a Christian say it's okay for your child to go to a library where a drag queen is going to lay on top of your child and teach him about gay rights. So that's a whole lot about America. Listen, good night. God bless you all. We'll see you tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time.